church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just enter into that place of worship. Hallelujah. Let something sweet come from your lips. Hallelujah. 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 There's such a spirit of expectancy in this place. I feel such a grace. There's such an anointing in this place, even right now, the presence of God. For there are times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. I believe that this is a day, this is a time of refreshing. Refresh us today. Refresh us, Father. Refresh us. Refresh us. Let there be a refreshing. Let there be a refreshing upon your people. We declare that there be a refreshing upon your people, a renewing, a refreshing. Refresh us today for times of refreshing are in the presence of the Lord. This is your day. This is a time of refreshing for God's people. We declare it today that this is a day of refreshing. This is a time of refreshing. Refresh us, Father. Refresh us. Renew us. Revive us. Restore us. Refresh your people. I declare, be refreshed. Be revived. Be restored. Be refreshed. Be revived today in the presence of the Lord. We declare, Father, that this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice in spite of what we went through even on this week, in spite of opposition, in spite of our reality, we shall rejoice and be glad. We thank you for your grace, for your grace is sufficient in our weakness. And we thank you, Father, for your grace, because now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think, we thank you, Father, that you're able to do exceedingly what our minds cannot even fathom, what our mouths, Father, cannot even vocalize or verbalize you now unto you you able to do it you able to do it we believe your word for faith is our reality for the just shall live by faith and not by sight we live by the unseen we live by what we cannot see open up our eyes today let deliverance take place let deliverance take place deliver us deliver us Deliver us, deliver us from evil, deliver us from evil, deliver us from evil, Father. Oh, Father, we cry out today for you hear the cries of your people, that you hear the cries of your children. You will answer us, Father, for we know that nothing takes you by surprise, Father, for we know that you will not delay when we cry unto you. We cry out, we cry out, we cry out. Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. Here I'm on my knees, but Koshan Badarama, Abba Father. We thank you that you are our Father. You are our Father. You are our Lord. And we thank you today, Father, for impartation. We thank you for leadership in this place, that you strengthen every leader, that you strengthen our leaders right now, Father, that there be a greater grace even upon their lives. Let great wisdom be released, wisdom that is 10 times better. Let it rest upon your people. Let it rest upon your people. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, release it in this place. Unveil your mind to us. Father, we want to hear your heart. We want to hear your heart. We want to hear your heart today. 
We are the light of the world. We are the light that shall break forth. Hallelujah, like the morning. We declare that your people shall break forth because we are the light of the world. We shall pierce through darkness. Darkness shall not pre prevail, but we are the light that shall not be hid. We are the light that shall not be hid. We are the light that shall sit upon the, the hill of the city. We speak, Father, that right now our light shall break forth. Hallelujah, that darkness shall not pre prevail anymore. That your people are coming in out of obscurity. That their light is breaking forth. Our light is piercing through darkness. We declare, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light in this city. Let there be light in every sphere of society. Let there be light. We come against injustice. We come against every traditional man-made system. And we declare, let there be light. We declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is at hand. Power authority. Power and authority. Power and authority. For well, these are the days where we cannot just be gifted, where we just cannot be anointed, but we need authority. We need wisdom. Let it rest upon your people. Authority. Those that are willing to submit to authority, that are given authority. Authority over sickness and disease. Authority over poverty. Authority over any generational curse. Authority. That we are people that are rising in our authority. 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 He's looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You have to worship him from your spirit. Come on, out of your spirit. Out of your spirit. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. We worship you, we worship you in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. In spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for what shall take place on today. We thank you for your word that is coming from our man of God. Hallelujah. Let there be a fresh anointing, a fresh grace. For I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. The sound of abundance of rain. For what my people have been waiting for. For the expectancy of my people. For every dry place. There shall not be any famine. There shall not be any lack. For my people shall experience the life I died for them to have. The abundant life. I hear the sound. There's a sound. I declare that it shall reign over your people's lives. It shall rain. It shall rain. Abundance of rain. I declare the abundance of rain that there shall be a release even on this place on today. The abundance of rain. 
the abundance of rain so there's a sound there's a sound come on open up your ears to hear the sound even before the rain is released it's your rain in this place upon my people today upon your lives it's your rain No more dry places. We declare that the dry season is over. The dry season is over. The dry season is over. Yes, get, come on, come on, yeah. The dry season is over. Right now you have to build up your expectation. You have to hear the sound before the rain comes, before the rain is released. There has to be an expectation. Come on, we put our expectation. We put our demand on the cloud. On the cloud. The cloud by day. 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 Cloud by day. For he is that cloud. The abundance, our source. Your source is in the cloud. Your abundance is in him. He's the cloud. The cloud, he's the cloud. And he's hovering in this place. Rain, 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 Come on, there's a cloud in this place. There's a cloud over your life. Let there be rain. Let there be rain, let there be rain. Shower. For well, this is the day I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come on, there's a stirring. There's a stirring right now. Come on, there's a stirring. There's a stirring in this place. There's a stirring in your place. There's a downpour coming. Yeah. Come on, all I need is a few people just to worship him for the rain. Just to worship him. All I need is a few. They can see the cloud. Come on. They can see the cloud, knowing that faith is my reality. Open up the eyes of your people. Faith is your reality. Not what you see is only temporal. What you see is temporal. Father, we believe your word. For heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word, the vision that you have given us, the dream that you have given us, the word that you have spoken over our lives, there shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. Come on. Your eyes are being opened today. For too many of my people, they do not see what I have said. We've allowed our emotions to dictate what God has spoken to us. The word of the Lord, it must try you. This is your season of being tried, of being tested. But continue to believe what God has said concerning your life. For it shall come to pass. 
it shall come to pass. Everything else shall fall away. But continue to stand upon my word, my people. Continue to stand upon what I said. Do not be moved. Do not allow reality to toss you to and fro. But there is a coming season and that time is approaching suddenly. For what I have said and what I have spoken, you shall surely see it. You shall surely obtain it. You shall surely walk in it. It shall surely come to pass. It shall surely, 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 surely. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for grace. We thank you for your word, for your word that is coming. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for how you are shifting our minds even now. And our faith is increasing. Our wisdom is increasing. Our stature in the spirit is increasing. And this is a season of favor, of great favor, of remarkable things happening and uncommon and strange things and opportunities happening for your people. And for those of you who have, have lost your expectation, it shall be even revived on today. It shall be restored. Your faith is going to be restored today. And for what has shaken you shall not move you again. You shall be immovable. He's bringing stability to the minds of his people today through his word. Stability. For we declare we shall not be shaken. We shall not be moved. We shall not be shaken. We shall not be moved. Not moved out of my position. Not moved out of my assignment. Not moved out of what God has said concerning my life. I will not. Come on. I, I will not be moved. I will not be moved by men's opinions. Whoa. I will not be moved by the accuser of the brethren. I will not be moved by condemnation. Hallelujah. Come on now, praise him. For the word is coming. Come on, the word is coming. The word is coming. The word that it shall accomplish. The word that shall accomplish everything it was set out to do. Come on, this is our apostolic church. The word coming. God is about to speak to his people. God is about to bless us. God is about to speak. 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 God is about to speak to us. Oh, God is about to speak. God is about to speak. God is about to speak to us. Oh yes. To us. Yes. To us. God is about to speak to us. Hey, God is about to speak to us. God is about to speak to us. God is about to speak to us. Hallelujah. Come on, keep worshiping him. Come on. Come on, keep worshiping him. Come on, keep worshiping. Come on, keep worshiping him. Come on, the Father's here. Come on, give him your worship. Come on, give him what he wants. Come on, give him your worship. Come on, come on, that's it. Worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship, worship, worship. Come on, worship him. That's it, worship him. Come on, open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. That's it, worship. Come on, worship. Come on and worship. Reba Sokata. Come on and worship. Come on, that's it, worship him right where you are. 
Come on, come on, give him what he wants. 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 He wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. That's it, just worship him. Right where you are, right where you are. Come on and worship the Father. For the Lord, he is good. For the Lord, he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Come on, let's just release our worship in this place this morning. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. Come on, worship is a very personal experience. It's a very personal experience. It's a very personal experience. Come on, give him glory, give him glory. Give him what he wants. Give my sick That's it, worship. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. Come on, he wants your surrender. The Lord wants your surrender. He is waiting for you to surrender. Come on, he wants your worship. He wants your surrender. He wants your yes. He wants your yes. He wants your surrender. Give him what he wants. Come on and give him what he wants. Come on and give him what he wants. Glory, glory, give him what he wants. Come on and give him what he wants. He wants your worship. Yeah, bye bye, so. Come on, the Lord desires to commune with us this morning. He desires to commune with you. He desires to commune with you. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your surrender. Come on, don't give him a half bait. Don't give him a half-hearted worship, but give him your true, sincere. Come on, engage. Come on, engage. Come on, the Father wants to love on you. He wants to love on you. He wants to love on you. He wants to love on you. And it's important when we worship that we put everything we have into our worship. Reba sokata, man sotayo. Father, we give you our worship. We give you our worship. He wants your worship. He wants your surrender. He wants your yes. He wants you to surrender to him today. He wants your here am I Lord. Here am I God. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. So right now, just give him what he wants. Come on, that's it. Just give him what he wants. Just give him what he wants. Give him what he wants. Come on. Come on, give him what he wants. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Give him what he wants. Give him what he desires. Come on, give him what he comes for. He comes for the worship of his people. He comes for the worship. Give the Lord what he wants. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your worship. Wants your worship. That's it. Come on, just worship him. Come on, just worship him. The worshiper longs and desires to create a space where you and God, where we and the Father can commune, can commune. Come on, give him your worship. Give him your worship. Everybody has been mandated to praise, but worship requires a relationship. Worship requires you to know who he is. Worship requires you to understand that he is God and besides him, there is no other God. He wants your worship. We bow down and we worship you, Father. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship. We worship. Give him what he wants. Give him what he wants. 
Give him what he wants. He wants your worship. That's it. As we transition this morning, come on, just give the Lord your worship all over this place. Give him your worship. Come on, like a sweet smelling incense. I believe that the worship of God's people go up before heaven like a sweet smelling incense. And even as the Levites and the priests, as they operated in the temple, they lit incense and they even released and lit the incense as they lit the candle and the, the incense and the smell went before the Father. And I believe your worship goes before God as a sweet smell. Come on, he wants your worship. Give him your worship. Give him your worship. Because we are not moved today. We're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel. <laughs> For the Father has already gone before you. Hallelujah. He's already gone before you. Come on, just worship him. Now all over the building as you're worshiping him, I want you to transform that worship into a praise. Come on, begin to release a praise in this place. Come on, open up your mouth and release a praise in this place. Come on, open up your mouth and release a praise. Yeah, bye -bye, so. Come on, open up your mouth and release a praise. Come on, open up your mouth and release a praise unto God. Come on, open up your mouth and release a praise unto God. A praise that's worthy, it's worthy, worthy of his name, worthy of his name. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, worship him, praise him. Come on, come on, come on. Now open your mouth and praise him. Come on, open your mouth and praise him. Open your mouth and praise him. Come on, open your mouth and praise him. Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Now come on, clap those hands and bless him all over this place. Come on, bless him all over this place. Come on, bless him all over this place. Bless him all over this place. Masoka, glory, rekata, manso. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. For you alone are worthy of all praise. You alone are worthy of all the glory. You alone are worthy. And we bless your holy name. Yeah, my. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Woo. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, look over at somebody and give them a big old smile and tell them, I praise God for you today. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, I praise God for you. Come on, clap those hands as you take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We honor him. We bless him. Come on, clap your hands and praise him for Prophet Corey. We thank God for Prophet Corey opening us up this morning creating an atmosphere, creating an atmosphere, releasing the prophetic word of the Lord. We praise God. Come on, prophecy brings life. Come on, prophecy brings life. Come on, we thank God for the word of the Lord. Woo! And even the word of the Lord that is about to come, that is about to come before you, we honor him, we praise him, we celebrate him. If you could turn my monitor down just a little bit and turn some up in the house for me, please, because I don't like the way my monitors sound. I don't sound like me. Glory to God. I don't sound like me, so I'd rather not hear me not sound like me. And I'll just take what's out there in the house. Yeah, you turn it down just a little bit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless the Lord. We honor him this morning. We praise him for, again, his presence, his presence. His presence is more powerful and more important than anything you have in your pocket. 
anything you have in your bank account. His presence is more powerful than anything you own or possess. You may get excited about your beach home. You may get excited about your mountain property. You know, Pastor Robert, that house you have in the mountain. Glory to God, Prophet Corey. You may get excited about your house in San Diego. And I know when you and your wife fly over there, y'all enjoy it. I'm just prophesying what's coming. Glory to God. But there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. I am excited because, listen, I am reminded even of the psalmist who said, whatever you do, listen, you can take this, you can take that. But whatever you do, do not take your presence away from me come on look at I mean just look at everything you have and it cannot measure up to the presence of God you ought to clap your hands right there and give him glory I believe that this is why many people cannot even muster up a praise because their, 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 if you will, appraisal of life, it does not calculate and factor in that God is the best thing that ever happened to me. And so therefore, whenever things are not going well, sometimes you can't find that praise or you can't find that joy, you can't find that strength because your strength may be predicated upon something that is basically fickle and is not something that you can truly trust. But I I'm glad I'm like the psalmist. I'm going to put my trust in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a sure foundation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless him this morning. We honor him. We celebrate him. We thank God for his presence. If you will, this morning, we're going to expeditiously get into the word of the Lord. We thank you for gracing us with your presence this morning. We certainly praise God for Impact Church Global. Can we clap our hands for our brothers and sisters who are watching by way of uh, the broadcast, we praise God for our brothers and sisters all over watching, all over watching. Praise God for our brothers and sisters as well as our friends even in the continent of Africa. We appreciate those of you who tune in and uh, just sort of watch the broadcast. We ask that you would share the broadcast, send somebody an early Christmas uh, blessing. Uh, you know, they say Christmas is in July. I believe they say that because that's my birthday month. Uh, this is my, so Christmas can start in July. Life. Praise God. I like that. But listen, send somebody a blessing today and share the broadcast. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not the biggest, if you will, uh, as it relates to I'm not the most uh, skilled at this technology. But I think you can basically go in there and you can literally find somebody and say, here. You can literally send it to someone uh, particular and specific. So send that broadcast to someone, share it with someone, and we appreciate you tuning in. Listen, if you have your Bibles this morning, we have been in a series uh, talking about raising sons, if you will. And today there's a slight deviation because the Holy Spirit just began to really minister to me. And uh, he began to uh, open me up to some things that, that the Father is basically, I believe, not only saying, but I believe is something that is of great concern to him, uh, and it is something that I believe that he desires for us to address even as we just deviate a little bit. One of the things that we do believe as we continue to teach, talk about, and even as we sort of intertwine this particular message in with our series, I believe that the sons of God, and remember when we talk about the sons, we're talking neutral, gender neutral, so sons always reference male and female, so don't, don't worry about that, sisters, if you hear sons, say, why is he so if you will, bent on calling them sons when we are daughters too. Sons is a neutral, gender neutral term that means sons and daughters, meaning male and female. We are the sons of God. And I always like to tease the brothers because, you know, uh, the brothers pretty much need to understand that God has put a skirt on you. Uh, and so the scripture says that literally he is uh, basically fixing up his bride. So all of us is the bride. All of us are the bride of Christ. I'm not ashamed of that. Praise God. And so we can we can teach even if you will. Uh, much about gender, but today I want to just really highlight the fact that sons also carry the joy of the Lord. Sons carry the joy of the Lord. When you are a son of God, you carry the joy of the Lord. And one of the things the Lord said to me is that I am I am not able to do some of the things that I desire to do in my people's lives, as well as in the church and in the ministries that we basically are uh, stewarding and ministries that God has given to us, as well as the revival and I believe the last day and time evangelistic move that God desires to release in the earth, it cannot be done until we properly posture ourselves in the joy of the Lord. Woo. 
We cannot, we cannot do what God desires to be done. We cannot fulfill what God has purposed and predestined for us to fulfill until we properly posture ourselves in the joy of the Lord. Now, stay with me because this is not an elementary lesson. You're going to have to basically uh, ask the Holy Spirit to give you, uh, you know, some revelation and wisdom that comes with this word. So I don't want you to feel like, oh, he's getting ready to teach on the joy. I heard the joy of the Lord. Uh, but the joy of the Lord is so important because with Without the joy of the Lord, we will not be able to remain in the victory as well as in the posture of victory and the posture of faith so that we can experience and so that we can literally uh, represent God and his kingdom well. If revival is going to take place, we must carry the life of God. We must carry the joy of God because you cannot uh, you cannot reproduce the life of Christ without the joy of the Lord. And I believe many people are not moved or impressed or they're not even, if you will, touched by what we call the anointing on our lives, more or less our testimony and what God is doing in our life because we don't carry that joy in a place and in a state where we're walking in victory and full of life. I've never seen, I ain't going to say that because that's an overstatement, but sometimes it concerns me as I believe it concerns God to see how depleted his people, his, his body, his children look sometimes. And, and, and there's a reason for this. Stay with me. I believe many people get defeated, depleted, and they lose a sense of joy because their hope as well as uh, their expectations and their strength is predicated upon something other than God. When God is not the source, then you become up and down. Come on. You live your life like you're at Carowinds or, or like you're at King's Dominion, if you can relate to that. I'm not a big uh, amusement park person, but, you know, uh, I've probably been to Carowinds, King's Dominion. I've been to those places probably three times in my entire life. I'll be 54 this year. I ain't really ooh, up and down. Uh, but that's how many people live their life, up and down and up and down. And literally, if things are going well, we can represent God well. But when things are not going well, we do not maintain the posture, nor do we maintain the testimony as it appears. Because you give everybody a mic and they'll tell you God is good, but sometimes you have to honestly say you don't look like it. And you don't act like it. Everything is based on how things are going in order for you to go for God. We go hard for God when God has done something for us. When the Lord basically is meeting all of my expectations, I can go hard for God. Now, now stay with me because I don't want you to think that I'm teaching that God does not want to do those things, that God has not already done those things. But what you must understand, you cannot rely on life circumstances and situations in order to be effective in this end time move of God. And what God is looking for is a people who are postured in his strength. Woo! Glory to God. A people who are postured in his strength. A, a people who basically their excitement and their joy and their strength is not based on what's going on in your life. But what's going on in your life cannot deplete Neither can it put out the fire of God that burns in your heart because the fire that burns in your heart, it derives, I'm talking about directly from God himself. And as long as he remains the same, you remain stable and steady and consistent without regard to your disposition in life. Glory to God. Aren't you, aren't you ready to get around some people that, that are excited about God? Aren't you, aren't you ready to dwell? Aren't you ready to basically come to worship? And when we get into the 
house of God. We're like the psalmist who said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But we're not like some, if you will, begging, if you will, children coming to church just begging and wanting God to do something so we can be happy. Come on, somebody. But our happiness, our blessedness, our joy, our gladness is not based on what's going on in my life, but I am basically excited because of who he is. I'm not talking to everybody because everybody can't get excited about this. Some of you right now, you're trying to figure out how to tip out. You wish your bladder would move so you can get to the restroom, but you need to hear this because this is why we are so unstable because we are resting on things that are constantly shifting and moving and that's why we are tossed like a wave to and fro because we have no foundation in God. Oh, psalmist said, uh, listen, he said, I'll bless him at all times. Psalmist said, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. Come on here. And I know there are times when we really need God to heal us and deliver us. I'm not trying to imply that we do not have this humanity that we are wearing where we need God. But I'm telling you, there are, there are, are those and there are a people that God is raising up. And we're in an hour that literally I believe God wants to raise up a spirit of joy in his people so that literally people will be shocked when they hear your story because you don't look like what you're going through. You don't look like what's happened to you. It's something about the people of God that we must understand if revival is going to take place. Come on, we got to stop acting like we want revival and just uh, stop acting like we want revival so we can have a, a good service and draw folk in and have a good time in church but leave and don't know how to carry revival into the street. In order to carry revival into the marketplace, you got to have the joy of the Lord that will cause you to remain postured in a place where you can show forth the goodness of God even when you're going through hell. We're in the middle of a particular a, a generation in time where literally there are wars going on, not rumors of them, but there are literally wars going on and we act like this thing can't come over here and we act like we are spoiled brats and children just waiting on another blessing but God says I want you to posture yourself and say even though I'm expecting the blessings the material the monetary I'm expecting open doors I'm expecting if you will all of those things but God I'm postured to let the world know that we serve a God that literally no matter what happens no matter what comes no matter what goes I am in a posture of praise and I am in a posture of worship to show the world that our God God is God. Woo. You got to posture yourself that even if the banks crash, you know you're going to eat. Come on, somebody. You got to posture yourself that if they fire you, you still going to pay the mortgage. You got to posture yourself that if everything that I have in the bank is washed away through some technological, if you will, breakdown, God is still going to take care of me. You got to posture yourself as if you are serving the creator and not worshiping his creation. People ain't excited about God. They're excited about what he's doing. Woo! We're in the greatest day of idolatry we've ever been in. People are not excited about him. But they're excited about what he does. And I love him because he's so good. He doesn't stop doing just because he knows us. Come on here. God knows your heart. He knows that he, you're excited because he keep right on blessing me. But, what, but, but if he doesn't, and it doesn't mean he's not because we have faith. But what God wants you to do is to make sure your faith is rooted in him and not what he is doing for you. Yeah. Yeah. Nehemiah chapter number eight. Let's give you some scripture. Dead saints create dead churches. People just looking for the next opportunity, looking for what's excited, 
The reason why many people have no commitment to nothing, the reason why divorce is even higher now, the reason why folk can't stay on a job longer than two years now, the reason why folk can't stay anywhere anytime long because it's based on how things are going. It has nothing to do with what and who and what. Come on, come on here. I've married to my wife for the past 32 years because I love her and I am in a covenant with her, not because everything has been well, not because I've been this person perfect guy but when you have the right heart and you are postured right in your relationships you learn how to love even when it's difficult you learn how to love even when it hurts you learn how to be faithful even when it seems like it's killing you the bible says that we ought to keep our own word to our own hurt he said even if your word causes you hurt keep your word and why am I saying it? Because we're in a day and time, prophet, where literally people are adjusting themselves to what feels good and what looks good. Folk basically are not hearing God because God is not speaking to you and saying to you based on how you feel. God will speak to you. And just like he did Jesus when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was heavy and sorrowful because what God had assigned to him, he just did not want to do it. Come on. I know y'all love the fact that Jesus loved to do it but Jesus' flesh did not want to die for you but his spirit man said hey glory to God God if you ain't going to change this assignment uh, if you ain't going to change it see we love God when God does everything that makes us feel good and some people are flunking the character test of God because you cannot remain faithful you cannot remain in a state of joy because God is not honoring your prayer list uh, I feel God right there but God says I'm looking for those in this last season the oil is going to go to those that even when it don't feel good their posture is one of obedience their posture is one of praise their posture is still holiness they're not going back to their own vomit they're not going to turn and try to find stuff that makes them comfortable they're not going to go back to what they're familiar with but they're going to learn how to endure hardness as a good soldier In this last day as we build, I'm telling you, you better, you better understand building is something that God does. And what he's doing, he's doing a work yet and still in us, but he's doing a, yet a work in the earth. And he needs a people who basically their source of strength is God. God is my strength. Whew. God is my strength. Nehemiah chapter 8. Let's get some glasses so we can see. 8 and verse 10. Very familiar. I want to read. Let's start at verse 9. 8 and 9. Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, this day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not. Look at somebody say, stop mourning. Stop mourning. Stop mourning. Mourn not. It's time for us to stop mourning. But now, wait a minute. Apostle, you don't know what's going on in my life. I don't care. Just stop mourning. Because whatever is going on, whatever is happening, it cannot, it cannot decrease the value of who God really is. Oh, my God. I know. I know. We love being human because we can't help it. But it's even time to put that excuse up. Man, I'm human. And my therapist told me that I need to recognize. But your Bible says, disregard what you see. And how you feel while you stay connected. Let me help the therapist out because I live with one. <laughs> She's going to check me when I get home. <laughs> She's like, now, babe, people need to be real. And I get that. I have done myself probably this justice or dissatisfaction. I just have not probably always stayed connected to my feelings while I operated superficially. 
but it is imperative that you don't get caught in your feelings and lose your faith. The reason why Jesus told you to deny yourself is because your own flesh is going to try and live life based on how you feel and what you see. But if you want to be kingdom and if you want to be a child of God who's created in his image and his likeness, God is a spirit and they that worship, they that live for him, they that obey him, they that will be kingdom and exert and advance his will in the earth must learn the art of how to live above your carnal and your natural emotions yes acknowledge them yes say this is where I'm at but I'm getting ready to stop mourning come on somebody say I'm getting ready to stop mourning and what I love about it is that stop mourning was not based this was a command that God gave his people here in the text he said and and to stop mourning but it wasn't based on something that stopped oh glory to God they still talking about me but I'm finna stop mourning the situation hadn't changed. The bills are still on the counter and the bank account is still where it's at, but I'm not going to mourn. Come on. I still feel this in my body and I still feel the pain, but I'm not going to mourn. I still see what I see, but I'm not going to mourn. I'm not going to change my situation until I change my attitude. And you got to change your attitude to even see the prayers you desire to see. For God is able to do exceeding and abundant above all that you ask or think. And our problem is we're asking for what we cannot think what we cannot mentally and through a mentality produce what you're asking because you don't have a mind for it and this mind starts with joy I'm gonna break down joy because joy has three levels to it this is not just this as the world you know they say this joy I have the world didn't give it to me this is not a new cow kind of joy this joy I have is not a, a new house kind of joy. It, it, it's not the fact that, oh my God, a door just opened and I got this great opportunity kind of joy. Those things produce praise and they do produce levels of happiness. But this joy that we're talking about where he told them to stop mourning, the situation hasn't changed yet, but he said, I want you to change your attitude towards the situation. Because see, what you want me to do to change the situation, but you don't want to change your attitude. You want to still look like you're sucking lemons while you want me to produce glory. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce glory if you can stop sucking lemons and release a praise. For the psalmist says that when the praises go up, blessings come down. And you can't do that without joy. Come on, I won't listen. I, I, I will tell you in a minute because if I was not up here and sitting where you are, I would feel the vibes of my row. And if I didn't have somebody next to me that has some joy, I would very respectfully and kindly try to get my handkerchief and my books and, and I'd move to a row where there's some joy. Aren't you tired of sitting or uh, tired of sitting around dead folk, folk praise God who ain't got no joy, folk who ain't got no kind of joy joy, no happiness. Uh, come on here, you, you sit beside them and they always mourning. Oh, aren't you tired of the same old sad songs? Uh, some folk, you know what they're going to say before they say it. Uh, oh, how you doing? Fair, partly cloudy. I'm going through. Girl, if it won't for bad luck, wouldn't have none at all. Child, if it ain't one thing, it's certainly another one. Uh, come on here, somebody. But God says, I need you to see this thing differently. I need you to enter into a vein where you understand that you are a prophetic people and what makes you prophetic is the fact that God has already set before the foundation of the world everything that he desires for you and because he has already done it it is stored up in the heavens and you got to learn how to move into a prophetic nature about yourself and learn how to get out of storage what God has already prepared for you you. you got to learn how that even when you don't have two nickels, you got to put on your best and you got to act like that I'm blessed and I'm walking in wealth until God gives you a wealthy mentality, 
until God gives you the ability to handle more, you got to act like you got it. I ain't talking about faking nothing. I ain't faking. Look at somebody say, I ain't faking. I'm just waiting. I ain't faking. I'm just waiting. Come on here. And while I'm waiting in his presence, I'm going to act like he's going to do it. Come on here. I'm going to act like he is, I'm talking about more reliable than Amazon. <laughs> when Amazon tell you they're going to send it on Tuesday, it's coming on Tuesday. When God promised you something, listen, I don't care how it looks. Uh, I don't care how it sounds. Uh, I don't care how it smells. Uh, I don't care who's in the land. Uh, I don't care how big they are. I don't care how hard they look. Uh, you got to get out of my land. You got to get out of my stuff. Uh, because God has given me that promise. Uh, and with every promise that God has given to you, oh, I'm getting ready to hurt somebody's feelings. Uh, but I'm going to help you at the same time. Every promise has a giant connected to it. Our God's name is not Santa Claus. His name is Yahweh. Religion told you that everything is free. Jesus paid for your salvation, but to get into your promise. Whoo! You're going to have to develop some faith and believe God beyond what you see. He says, stop mourning. Stop weeping. Whew, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Understand this. This is important because uh, even as they heard the law, and as Moses, excuse me, as Paul said in the New Testament, it was because of the law I knew my sins. They wept because when they heard the law, they also saw how short they were concerning God's expectations. The law made them weep because they understood we're not living up to it. And understand in this Old Testament, uh, the people of God did not have the ability to live up to the law because they did not have the spirit of God that graces us to be able to fulfill the law. So they wept because they heard the law. The word made them weep. And the word that they heard, the law, because they realized I don't have the ability to keep but he said, listen, stop mourning, stop mourning, stop weeping. Come on here. Put your tissue up. Glory to God. It's time for us basically to understand. He said then in verse number 10, this is where we want to be. He said unto them, go ye, uh, go your way. Eat the fat. In other words, get ready. Enjoy yourself. Eat the fat. Let me get my glasses. Come on. He said, eat the fat and drink the sweet. And send portions to them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. This is a word. This is the word that God said. Tell my people to stop being sorry. Stop being down. Come on here. I rebuke depression. Come on here. I rebuke the spirit of depression. Come on. Who, who told you you had to be depressed? Yes, I may have been diagnosed. I may have even symptoms of depression. But somebody say today I'm coming out of it. Glory to God. Because I do not see in heaven where depression exists. And as he is, so are we in the earth I ain't studying you devil I'm going to preach the Bible because the Bible says that as he is in heaven so are we in the earth come on here ah God is looking for some people who is going to defy even your own natural physical body and mind whether you are dealing with biological chemical depression or whether you are dealing with if you will psychotic depression literally God has delivered you from the spirit of depression and I rebuke it off of you. Come on here. If you are a born again believer, you got to make a decision that I'm not going to be sorrowful. But I'm getting ready to put on some joy. I'm getting ready to put on joy. I'm getting ready to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm getting ready to rise above my situation. Oh, I know it don't look good. I know it don't feel good. But I serve God. And my God from Zion. I serve God. God and God is able to do even the hard thing. Isn't there anything too hard for God? Uh, his, I don't need to take a pill for my mind to shift uh, into the 
goodness of the Lord, God Almighty. See, medicine has a way of even biologically and scientifically as it enters into your bloodstream to shift your brain to take you into a place that you could not get on your own. Huh. But somebody say the Holy Ghost who comes to lead me into all truths. And the truth is that I'm a child of God. The truth is he said one of the first things he said about me was that I'm blessed. And can I tell you being blessed is not being, if you will, blessed with material things. When you are blessed, that is a state of being that has nothing to do with what you have or where you live, but it's a state of being that's based on who you are in him. It's based on who he is and who you are in him, so I'm blessed. And the root word for blessed, come on here for those of you who don't, who don't feel like you can be happy. You, listen, once you find out who he is and once you find out who you are in him something about me and him that just makes me happy oh my god you might not have very much of anything but right in your little 700 square foot apartment while you're driving your hoopty while you gotta change the oil at every stop glory to god gotta put water in at every stop you can still praise god while the car is clunking while the car is smoking because it won't always be like this but my life and my joy is not based on what I drive I'm happy because he lives I'm happy because he woke me up this morning I'm happy because I have the opportunity to change my situation because I have breath in my body psalmist said while I yet live will I praise him while I sit on the side of my bed while I have breath in my body I'm going to say thank you Jesus oh you ought to look at somebody and say now what's wrong with you We have become junkies in the sense that some folk can't wait to get back to church because that's when they feel most excited. They have no ability to maintain joy throughout the entire week. They got to wait for us. Aren't you glad that you got the kind of joy that you ain't got to wait for a church service for you to be? Oh, come on here. Sometimes I catch the joys when I'm cutting grass. Glory to God. While I'm out on the lawn, more I feel the e. My, 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 my soul. Glory to God. I'm so glad I don't have to have an organist or a keyboardist or a percussionist, but sometimes I feel a dance in my feet and even though I was born with two left feet I thank God I can dance for Jesus God said to me this week he said you will never push vision that I've given you with a bunch of folk dead waiting on me to do something for them for they can realize that I have given them all power. He said, wake my people up. Tell them to get their eyes off of what I created and put their eyes on the creator. Many people are depressed because they ain't got what they think they deserve. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Many people are mad because they ain't where they think they should be and forgot that they are let their right dead in the middle of life and God has blessed them mad because their husband ain't like somebody else's husband. And I wish you would like so and so and I wish you would just open your eyes and see that God gave you a man of God uh, who will put up with what that other man won't gonna put up with. Hey, sha -ta -ta -ta. I feel God right there. I wish I had a woman that could cook like sister so and so uh, and if you had that woman she would have left you a long time ago because uh, that woman ain't gonna put up with you like I put up with you. See sometimes you're trying to believe and you're, you're this oh God you're praising God for all the wrong things and overlooking the thing that means the most you ought to appreciate what God has given to you you may not have exactly what you want but thank God I'm still in this thing the race is not given to the swift neither is the battle given to the strong but he that can endure to the end he that continue can continue to believe God until he does it but God says you got to be able to stay in a posture of victory and a posture of joy until I get it done see we tend to think that God is a God that's doing a quick work I, I debate that because nothing about scripture shows me God is quick 
God is the slowest I've ever seen. Sometimes I read the Bible and get nervous about my own issues. It took 400 years for Israel to come out of bondage. And I'm saying, no, 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 God. <laughs> then after he brought them out, he didn't take them right in. He said, I'm, I'm bringing you out, but now I got to put you in the wilderness to purge what took place while you was in Egypt. <sighs> you ever seen so many microwave moves? Even when I see him preparing his people, he prepared Moses. Forty years he prepared Moses in Egypt. Moses recognized his passion, calling, and love for his, for his people and God's people. Killed a man, fled Egypt, and went to Midian. Stayed there 40 years. It is 80 years. Come on, somebody. Spirit of prophecy move, and in 80 minutes, now you ready for an ordination. As a prophet. Whew. The gifts are without repentance. Your gift can be activated and turned on, but your development is going to take some time. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. We can activate a gift that was in you when you was born. You was born with it, but listen, you ain't ready for what God put in you from birth. God has to develop you for what he has put in you. And so God is not a God that does everything quick. And sometimes we got to learn the art of patience. We must have need of patience patience we must have need of patience some people got God on a clock if you don't do it God says if I don't what oh, I, I don't know if y'all serve the same God I serve but sometimes you can pray and pray hard I'm talking about get every scripture you know go and run the references and find every scripture that declares that you have a right to it and God still will not release it to you why because one he's God and something that God does does well he knows how to prove our motive God Almighty because a lot of people want what they want so that they can be important hey Shatai. but God is saying if I can't get no glory I'm not going to release this thing to you I'm trying to purge and I'm trying to prove you so that it ain't about you that if I use you you ain't gonna lose your mind and become big headed and implode over one service that I use you to preach if I give you a word to prophesy you ain't gonna now get you three adjutants get you a briefcase and some cards and call yourself a pro ah, I need somebody that can be used of God but literally Listen, God, I ain't trying to use you. This, this ain't a long message. But God wants you encouraged. You can't do anything for him defeated and beat down and people at work trying to figure out how good your God is when you look like he ain't good. God is good. And now, the word source is what really, it's where something comes from. It's, it's like, you know, in insurance, there's what we call a peril, a cause. You can have a flat, but what caused it? What was the peril? What was the cause of the flat? Hmm. And so, when you talk about a source, it's what causes, it's what uh, basically produce and it's where you get what you get and uh, it's like uh, uh, the source of your strength must be God this is what causes me to be up when things look down Whew. this is what causes me to praise when I should be crying so he says here he says he says, send portions unto them prepare that have nothing uh, and prepare for them. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So this is where your strength is, is in the joy of the Lord. Now the joy, joy is one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit, the Holy Spirit, singular, has multiple characteristics. 
And joy is one of the fruit, one of the evidence. Come on, we love thinking that the evidence of having the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. But the evidence of the Holy Spirit, literally the fruit of the Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is caused by the moving of the Spirit. It is one of the unctions that the Spirit comes upon us and we speak as he gives us utterance. But the fruit, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit, singular, the characteristic of the fruit is not speaking in tongues. That is an evidence that some spirit is moving you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because everybody speaking ain't the Holy Ghost. Y'all don't want to read the Bible. The Bible didn't say speaking in tongues is evidence of the Holy Ghost. The Bible helps us understand that as they came out of the upper room, they were moved by the Spirit. Come on. But there's a lot of different types of rooms. There are demonic rooms and there are folks, but y'all ain't going to preach with me here today. I'm trying to get you some Bible. I'm trying to help you understand. But Jesus said you will know them by the fruit they bear. And the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says that there's love, there's joy. This is how I know you got some Holy Ghost because you got some joy. You got some love. You have some patience. You, you're, you're long suffering. You're gentle. You ain't mean. You Come on here. You're kind. One to walk. Come on, somebody. Oh, look at your neighbors. I thought you had the Holy Ghost. Oh, we think the Holy Ghost is just operating in and out of the gifts. Do you not know psychics are really prophets who have not yet submitted to God? A psychic literally has a gift. They just being used by the enemy. Now, now, let me help some of you who don't have a prayer life, who love taking short, because you go and call that psychic if you want to. Because, see, they might give you a word, but they're going to give you a whole lot more. Because with every psychic and every word a psychic gives you, there comes a demonic presence that comes with that word. And even though they can be accurate, that's why do not be moved by people who have accuracy but no relationship. There are people who can tell you about, their, about your life, but the reason why they tell you is because demons are telling them. It's called divination. Everybody's not getting their information from the Holy Ghost. And I've never seen so many gossipers who become prophets. How can you be a prophet and you gossip? You can't be a gossiping prophet, and you can't be an accurate, uh, uh, an authentic, and genuine prophet if you entertain gossip. We got to learn how to purify our gifts so that we can bring edification and comfort to the body of Christ. That's this evening. I done jumped into the evening teaching. Come on, somebody, because we, 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 got, to, we got to revisit this thing. But understand, joy is a characteristic of the Holy Spirit. It's one, of the, it's one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have joy. The scripture also says that the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and somebody say joy in the Holy Ghost. God today wants to release and endow you with joy. Let me help you understand what joy is. Joy is gladness of heart. The word joy is gladness of heart. It's a positive attitude or a pleasant emotion. Your emotional state is pleasant when you have joy. Even when your situation is not. When you have joy, you can be pleasant emotionally Calm, poised, pleasant, walk in love, even though you're going through hell. You know how they say, where they do that at? Where, where they do that at? They do that in God. They do that in God. It says here that, that, that joy is a pleasant emotion. It's delight. Delight yourself in the Lord. It literally means to delight. And, and there are many different levels, or there are three levels of joy. The first level of joy is gladness. Turn to Psalm 4. Preach, Nusa. This is what God is doing. Even right now, he's doing this for you. He's doing this for you. Psalm 4. He's restoring, as the scripture says in Psalms 51, he said, restore the joy of my salvation. You're saved. You ought to have some joy. Glory to God. Look at Psalms 4 and verse number 7. 
Psalm 4 and 7 says, Thou hast put gladness in my heart. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. Come on here. The job didn't do it. God did it. I want you to think about why are you glad? What causes you to be glad? What is the source of your gladness? What's the source of your delight? He says, he says that thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increase. Look at this. He's saying, you put gladness in my heart more than my corn and my fields were increasing. I'm not glad because my fields were increasing. I'm glad because you put gladness in my heart. And I will both lay me down. Look at this. When you have gladness in your heart, he said, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. Glory to God. Oh, God, sleep is a form of worship. When you can't sleep, when the enemy can disturb your sleep, he is basically exposing your faith and trust in God. I bind the spirit of, what is it? Is it insomnia where folk who can't sleep? Is that what that is? Come on, let's send it back to hell. Come on here. Let's say, come on, let's give somebody a good night's rest. I bind that spirit of worryation. I rebuke the demon of anxiety and I command insomnia even now to get off of God's people. And I decree and declare that he has given his children beloved sleep. And even as Jesus laid down and slept in the bottom of the boat, while the ship was in the middle of a storm the scripture says that Jesus was sleeping and the storm was raging to the point where the disciples thought that they were going to be killed, destroyed because the storm was so violent and they went and woke Jesus up and I can only imagine Jesus saying why did you wake me up? Jesus reminded me of me right there when, when, when my wife wakes have you ever been woken up for a question? You woke me up to ask me something? <laughs> Jesus said, why did y'all wake me up? They said, don't you care? They were anxious and they were fearful of the storm. But sleep is a type of worship. And look at what it says in verse 8. When you have joy and you have gladness is the first level of joy. When you have joy, you have a level of gladness. And gladness will allow you to lay down in peace in shalom, nothing missing, nothing lacking, and you can sleep. For thou, look at the source here of his peace and his sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. Safety is of the Lord. Safety is not in ADT. Safety is not in CPI. Safety is not in a bank account. Security is not in a job. But safety is of the Lord. Turn quickly. Let me give you some scripture and get you out of here. Turn to Psalm 30. Oh, I'm preaching good. What the Lord is saying is I want to restore the joy of my people. I want my people to walk in joy. I want them to live in a state of gladness. Verse 11 in Psalm 30 says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Oh, I prophesy that God is turning your mourning into dancing. God is literally causing what calls you to mourn. Now get this, get this. It didn't necessarily say anything about the situation, but thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing, and thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. You are being girded this morning with gladness. Verse 12 says, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. Oh, my God. I'm hearing the songwriter who said, I will not be silent, but I will always praise. I will always bless. I will always glorify God. Why? Because he's turned my mourning into gladness. And I will give thanks unto thee forever. Let's give you one more. Look at, uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter number one. Oh, I'm preaching good. So the first level of joy is gladness. We get ready to get you out of here, but we're going to let up a praise because I believe that literally when you have joy, you have the ability to praise God. And sometimes the enemy is daring you. I dare you to praise him knowing what you're going through. And sometimes the devil will mess with your head. What are you praising God for? Look at the mess you're in. 
But can I tell you, sometimes people look at you and try to figure out, how you still, you know, come on, how you still, you know, I was talking to a pastor recently, you know, uh, uh, Apostle Jonah, I was talking to a pastor and I was telling him, listen, he was like, man, how, how do you keep focused, you know, when it seemed like there's so much instability around and in church? I said, because my focus is not in people, bruh. It's not in people. It's not in situations or circumstances. Sometimes you even have to tell yourself and you have to say to yourself, even if it don't work out the way God told me it was going to work out, I'm still trusting him. Come on. Sometimes you got to say, because see, some folk basically they got anxiety because it don't look like it's going to work. And I done told everybody what was going to happen. And I done told them how it was going to happen. And, and, and oh, God, now if it, 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 God is on you. You told me. I told him. If it don't work, hey, ain't no skin off me. It's on you. I have, listen, I have no pride to the point where it's got to work in order for me to feel good about God. If it doesn't work, guess what? He's still God. If it doesn't take off, he's still God. Well, what if it don't have, he's still God. Well, what you gonna do? I'm still gonna praise him. Even when it didn't go, it didn't go the way it, I, I thought it was gonna go this way. But guess what? He's still God. There has no value been lost. There is no value lost just because it did not work out the way I planned and the way we planned it. Some of you done base and, and you reduce God to your plans. Oh my God. God and you are fickle when you do that when you reduce God to your plans God will give you a vision and a plan and then let it fall just to see if you still trust him or whether you're after a platform because platforms come down come on here platforms fall but God doesn't and when God is what you're standing on, listen, heaven and earth shall pass away. But God, his word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. I'm standing on God. Come on, what are you, I'm standing on God. Listen, I'm standing on God. What happened? You lost that big old house, I'm still standing on God. Did you, you lost that job, you were making, all, I'm standing on God. Come on, somebody, I'm not reduced to what I'm driving now. I used to drive a $80,000 car. Now you might drive a $12,000 car, but I'm still anointed. Come on here, I still can command devil. Come on here. What you drive does not have any kind of bearing on whether hell obeys you or not. But can I tell you, you can drive what you want and God wants you to drive good. But it's not where I get my oil from. Some of you get your oil from the praise of men. And when there's no praise in the house, you have no oil. Some of you can't preach unless there's a certain amount of people in the pews. But can I tell you, when you are anointed of God, God will send you and you'll say, I'll go. And when you say, I'll go, you will not get strength from what you see, but you get your strength from who sent you. pastor said how do you how do you stay focused how do you stay encouraged and then he, he actually said to me you know impact don't look like nothing be going to look like y'all just be bawling I was like, <laughs> and I pulled myself together I said to God be the girl because that's how it should look but but until you sit folk down let me tell you something we dealing with this we dealing with that uh, we dealing with this uh, this is where our budget is uh, this is where our vision is uh, this is who haven't come back to church yet this is who basically said they coming back but ain't been back uh, this is who is back but you know they're gone uh, and uh, y'all ain't got to say man uh, and, and, and you dealing with all that and I have to tell them look but it doesn't mean I gotta carry myself with what I'm going through I carry myself as if God is good I I don't glorify nor do I steal his glory because things are not going well but I'm like David if I was hungry I wouldn't tell nobody stomach is growling but God is still good oh my stomach and my ribs are touching each other but God is still good David said if I was hungry I wouldn't let folk know that God could not feed me I think what the world knows in many cases with some people's testimony is that God apparently has forgotten some of his people. Because all people talk about is how bad things are. 
how things are not working. Whew. Some people don't want God because how we presented him. Some people don't want God because we are representing him. And they don't want to be like us. But folk, listen, if, if they cannot say I want to be like you by how you drive, and some people are even following folk because people have basically, uh, have basically masked, if you will, their calling with material things. And I'm telling you, ain't nothing wrong with it. Nobody likes nice stuff but me, but I've learned that stuff don't mean nothing anymore to me the way it used to, right? But some people say, I want him to be my pastor because look at what he drives. But I'd rather have a pastor who could stand in the middle of a storm and show me how to trust God. Listen, he may not have a big house, but my God, when all hell breaks loose, that man will stare demons down. He will chase hell hound down and get hell off my back. When hell is on me, he will come and fight for me. He has a voice. Glory to God. He may not be the wealthiest pastor in the world, but glory to God. He knows how to love his wife. He loves his children. He set the example that heaven can honor and I would want to make it known so I get no emails ain't nothing wrong with having nice stuff have your nice stuff cause I'm gonna have me some but what makes us who we are is the fact that he's standing up in us Prophet Jacqueline, what makes you strong is not because of basically uh, your business or your, your image or, or glory to God, your, your perceived image by others, your reputation. What makes us who we are is the fact that he lives in us. And if he lives in me, come on here. Everybody that's against you, sister, sure, everybody that's against your enemies don't stand a chance. Everybody that comes up against you, they will meet an awesome God. What makes you unstoppable is the fact that God says I dwell in you what makes you unstoppable he said if you've done this to the least of mine you've done it unto me what makes you unstoppable when everybody wants to see you fail and you keep on succeeding when folk come together and they collaborate can I tell you haters collaborate people who don't like you get with other folk who don't like you and they create alliances but yet and still you still prosper you you still eat come on somebody just because they come up against you don't mean they can stop you uh, just because they lied on you don't mean they gonna stop you uh, God's gonna open a door you might not have but two followers right now and that's not what I'm after I'm not after a social media platform I want heaven to know my name I want hell to know my name hey glory to God and if heaven and hell knows who I am I can make some things happen in the earth you can can't make nothing happen in the earth until heaven knows your name and hell recognize David who are you David oh you are son of God that when you hit those keys hell no that's a heavenly key glory to God I'm talking about a key that heaven recognize a key that hell recognize I want a voice source of my strength is God. You ought to say it. I'm still strong because of God. And you've got to know you're strong. Look at everything that the enemy tried to take you out on. Look at how many enemies rose up again. Oh my God. God, sometimes I start to feel sorry for people who are my enemies. Why? Because they cannot defeat God. And look at what you've gone through. Look at everything the devil tried to do. Do you remember that night when it was almost, I mean, if you felt like you were about to lose it. How many of you remember those nights? There were nights when, my God, I just knew, I don't think I'm going to see tomorrow morning. And if I see tomorrow morning, I don't think it's going to read well in the paper. I don't think this is going to go well. Oh, my God, I, am I losing my mind? Have have you ever had those nights? There were nights when glory to God, I'm saying, God, you got to come here and help me. I'm about to lose my doggone mind here. I don't even know who I am. Have you ever had nights when you were reading the Bible but didn't know what you was reading and you've been reading it for years but yet and still he kept you and there have been times when I have been in my midnight hour when I felt like I was losing my mind and God said to me very precisely and I haven't changed my mind about you. Oh my God. There are times when you feel like you're losing 
in your mind. But God says, I haven't changed my mind. You still going to be great. You still going to do what I said. You still going to go where I told you to go. I'm going to send you. I'm going to do it. And I don't care what you feel right now. I got you. You ought to go ahead and send a memo to hell and tell them you can't stop me. Come on here. You ought to go ahead and let hell know I'm coming for you. Come on, somebody. I'm coming for you. I'm going to take back everything that belongs to me. I'm going to create a legacy for my children. Yeah, you tried to stop me. You tried to put me down. You tried to make me feel like I was nothing and nobody. You use everything possible. You use relationships. You had folk reject me. You had people do me wrong, but you ought to pass yourself but doggone I'm still here oh my god I'm still here what is this thing that God is I'm still here oh my god I'm still here oh god OD you tried to OD you tried to take yourself out God says uh -uh, I got plans for you huh you tried to drink it all away so I'm just gonna go crazy and just do what I need to do God says no nah, I got you huh? the plans that I have for you huh? they are greater than what you're going through I don't know where you get your strength from. I get my strength from God. I I don't, I I'm not ashamed of it. And when you get your strength from God, sometimes people will deliberately know you need to be encouraged, but they won't stop by. And sometimes they wish they could stop by, but they don't have time. Stop blaming folk for everything. Sometimes people just don't have time. Sometimes people can't get to you. And sometimes God won't let people get to you. Sometimes God will put you on the back side of that mountain and say, listen, just trust me. Stop. Just trust me. I'm trying to grow you up. Come on here. Because what I'm doing in you, listen, you're going to have to learn how to be who you are and stand and be obedient when ain't nobody behind you pushing you. Because if you're doing this for the push, honey, uh, brother, a uh, sister, can I tell you, you ain't going to do it long. Can I tell you? Because these folk will celebrate you today. Uh, and then when they have a choice between you and Barabbas, uh, they'll tell a thief, we want the thief. Let that joker there kill him, crucify him. You just fed him. You just worked miracles. Uh, you just opened doors. You did all. All you know to do, they slept out your couch, they ate up your food, they burnt out your lights, they ran your water bill up, and they'll leave your house and the bills that they created, leave them right there with you, and go and get blessed and banked, and won't send you back a dime. And you'll say, I'll do it again if I had to. joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's close this out. First level of joy is gladness. The second level is contentment. When you have joy, you have a level of contentment. You're content. You don't live your life in anxieties and anxious because the joy of the Lord brings contentment to your life. Contentment to your heart. The third level of joy is cheerfulness. Whew. The third level, when you have joy, you have gladness of heart. That's an emotion, gladness. Then contentment settles you. Paul said, no matter what state I find myself, I've learned how to be content. And when you're content, you're saying, I've learned to trust God. God, you're going to have to work this out again. Whew. You're going to have to do this again, Lord. He ever been there? Said, Here we go again, Lord. God said, That's all right. Just know you're going with me. Whew. Shucks. Sometimes you got to start over. But it ain't no big deal. Come on. Done it before. Still winning. See, still winning. Come on. See, see the world don't understand us because we still winning. Come on. We take sour stuff and we still winning. We Come on, I, man, I don't know where I'm feeling like this, but I, I feel like Denzel in the movie Training Day. And I know he was a bad character. He was a bad character. But Denzel said, you can't kill me. You can shoot me, but you can't kill me. Come on, the enemy can shoot you, but he can't kill you. You can talk about me, but you can't kill my influence. Come on, my anointing precedes your gossip. My anointing has gone ahead of your lie. Your lie is late. Holy Ghost done told the truth about me. Woo. Hmm. 
And when you have this kind of joy as I take my seat, you rejoice not because of your car. Turn to Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Oh, my God. Your excitement is not because of a material thing. And you, you, you praise God for that. You praise him for what he's doing and what he's done. But your joy, which is your strength, my strength is in him. The psalmist said his strength. Look at Psalms 14, or excuse me, 71 verse 14 says, But I will hope continually, and I will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. Look at what he said. My mouth shall show forth your righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the number thereof. Verse 16. We'll stop right there. And I'm going to show you what he was praising God for. He said, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. And I will make mention of thy righteousness even of thine only. He said, listen, I'm going to go in the strength of God. But when I go talking, I ain't talking about no car. I'm talking about the righteousness of God. My strength is basically predicated. I'm still standing because of your righteousness. I'm not standing because I'm still able to shop at a certain store. I might be on a budget right now. But God, his righteousness, there's no budget in him. There's no shortage in him. I have everything I need in him, even though I may not be able to do and go. I may not be able to take the vacation this year, but I'm still standing. Come on here. I'm not. Come on here. Come on. You need to not fall into depression because you can't go to the Bahamas. Glory to God. Oh, go and get you one of them water balloon things and put it in the backyard. Get your come on do something come on, I'm serious don't fall into depression because look like everybody having fun and some of you need to get slammed off Facebook because the more you're up there you looking at everybody look at what they doing look at us and look at us. you better get in the word and you better look in the word and find yourself in the word and learn how to do as David said that when I can't find nobody to encourage me I encourage my own soul Self. Hey, glory to God. I encourage myself. Vaughn, you're here because of the righteousness of God. The psalmist gives us an example that the psalmist rejoiced. Why are you rejoicing? He rejoiced over God's righteousness. He rejoiced over God's salvation. He got excited over salvation. Whew. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm excited because I'm saved. And even in Psalm 51, he says, David said, restore the joy of my salvation. Make me glad about being saved again. Come on, salvation is not a burden to me. I'm not burdened because I'm saved. I'm not burdened because I have to crucify this flesh. I'm not burdened because I won't let myself do what I want. Can I tell you, you want to do some stuff that heaven is not in agreement with, but you got to bring your own self in subjection to the word of God, and you got to get a prayer life. Listen, you will never be able to tame and discipline your flesh until you get in the word and get in prayer. And my God, restore the art of fasting. The church don't know anything about fasting. I've never seen so many prophetic people who have no prayer life and not fasting. Everybody is operating out of a spirit of gossip and a spirit, if you will, of divination because I found out if you're going to be an authentic prophet and prophetic people, you got to learn how to get in the presence of God and not prophesy your emotion, not prophesy what you want, but you got to hear what the Lord says. And sometimes God will speak a word that goes against everything that you're feeling. Sometimes God will prophesy to people that you want to see destroyed. Come here, Jonah. I don't want to go to Nineveh, God. Let them Ninevites die. I ain't got no word for God says, get ready, go to Nineveh. Get on the ship. Go. Go. I'm not asking you how I feel or how you feel about my people. He, he got excited and he rejoiced as you, as you begin to play. I'm getting ready to get out of this. But David talks about the psalmist. He rejoiced over the mercy of God. I say this quite often. I don't get excited because of everything that he's just done. I get excited about what he's doing. But what excites me more is that he's merciful. 
that if the truth really was told, we don't deserve to be here. I shouldn't be preaching. Come on, I don't care. You can't qualify for what God has called you to do. Paul said, I have this ministry as I have received mercy. That's why I'm not giving up. That's why I'm not fainting. That's why I'm not throwing in the towel. That's why I don't worry about this, that, and the other. That's why I'm not out trying to create and, and create games to get people in the church and to get, come on. That's why I'm not giving away toasters of the first 15 people here to get them in here because I realize that I have this ministry as I have received mercy and I put away all all of the childish games. I Listen, I'm, I'm preaching Jesus and him crucified. Come on here, and if you don't want that, honey, you might want to go down the street where they're giving out toasters. I'm trying to help you understand that we serve a good God, and if you stand for him, he will stand for you. If you will learn to put all of your trust in him, and I don't care somebody said, listen, if I'm going down, I'm going down with Jesus. If I'm on drown, I'm on drown with Jesus. But can I tell tell you we water walkers come on you ought to stand to your feet we water walkers if he call you out of the boat you got to know that you can walk on water and if you look like you're sinking he'll pick you up where's your strength coming from what's the source so I prepare to take my seat what's your source why are you excited and the reason why so many people are down because their excitement their joy their strength is based on something that's always changing the economy is changing. The opinions of people changing. Whew. People change. If your excitement and joy, your strength is based on who is around you today, tomorrow you might not have no strength. If your strength and your peace is in the security of your job. And man, I have a secure job. And God forbid they outsource you. But you can't put no security in nothing other than God. He said, I'm rejoicing because of his word. Psalm 119 and 114 talks about how the psalmist rejoiced because of the word of God. What causes you to rejoice? I'm rejoicing because of his faithfulness. God is faithful. How many of you know he's faithful? <laughs> I'm rejoicing because of his mercy. That when I don't cross all those T's, come on, look at your neighbor and say, get off of me, get off of me. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I see two eyes undotted. Get off of me. Get off of me. Don't be looking at my teeth. When I look at, I see your eyes. Your eyes ain't dotted. And what I love about God, he can handle me. He can handle you. Whew. <laughs> there are days and I'm like, Father, I love you for, for who you are. Because aren't you glad that God is not like people? And then you need to value those folk who can still honor and love and respect you when they see you in your humanity. Whew. But I love God because on your bad day, he's still in love with you. You ever had those days when you had to do like Israel? It's me again, oh Lord. At the altar of your mercy. I'm back, Lord. I done messed up again. No, they didn't see it, but you saw it. And then those that were there saw it and heard it. I cussed everybody out. This is not me. I'm hypothetically speaking now. I got a couple of sins, but it ain't cursing. <laughs> you know, everybody want to know what you, what's your sin. Look at your neighbor and say, nanny. David said, against thee and thee only have I sinned, God. If your name ain't God, don't ask me my sin. But the point I make is that he can handle you. And today he wants to restore. 
He wants to restore. He wants to restore. I want you right now to just begin to lift your hands and open your heart. I feel this in the spirit. One of the things the Holy Spirit said to me is that I want to restore the joy of salvation in my people. I want them to know the gladness of heart. I want them to know the contentment. And I want them to be cheerful. Mm. If you're here today and you have been battling, I'm talking about with just a stronghold, just constantly trying to keep you in a place of depression. Don't be ashamed. I want you to press to the altar quickly. Just, there are all forms of depression. People, I get depressed sometimes just thinking about stuff that I need done and I'm trying to figure out how can I get it done. And I have to keep myself from falling into depression. That's it. Press into this altar. And I want you to make a decision today that I will not be depressed. That my strength and the source of my strength is God. And I feel the spirit of the Lord even today is getting ready to snatch depression off of you. And again, I don't want to know the depth and level. All I know is any form in whatever capacity, God is getting ready to remove that spirit of heaviness and the spirit of depression and the spirit that even buffets you. It's not as if you walk in it all the time, but sometimes it just comes and it just comes upon you and it just causes you to feel gloom and so forth. But God says today, I'm getting ready to cause you to put on a whole new garment of joy. Whole new garment of joy. There are those of you who are even in your seats and you may not be dealing with depression on a certain level, et cetera, et cetera. But even I hear the Lord saying, even over this whole house, I'm getting ready to release a spirit of joy over my people. Yeah, my, my soul. Whew. I want you to shift into something a little stronger. Go into a deeper key for me, sir. Because I feel the prophetic move of God coming and hitting this altar. Makata. Ribanso. Yeah. I just feel it. Just begin to worship him all over the building. Just begin to worship him all over the building. Yay. I'm going to lay my hands upon you. And the Holy Ghost is getting ready to snatch depression off of you. And I hear the Lord saying, expect greater, expect greater, expect a new day, expect a new day, a new day, greater. Father, we thank you. We snatch depression off now in the name of Jesus. Rabbi, so in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you will not live with it. You will not live with it. It will not be this way, saith the Lord. And I release over you a spirit of joy and a spirit of hope. Joy also brings the ability to be optimistic. And I hear the Lord saying, begin to expect greater. I release over you, Jacqueline, a spirit of miracle. I release miracles. 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 Come on, in your seat, just help me war. Just help me war. Rekata. Miracles. Miracles. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that depression even now is being snatched off of the man of God. We release the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. That's it. Just begin to praise him. The spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. We take off of you, woman of God, any form and all forms of depression. We decree and declare right now that, God, you're releasing over the woman of God a spirit of joy. A spirit of joy. A spirit of joy be upon you now. And there's a shift that's even coming now, saith the Lord. Even now, in the name of Jesus, we break off of you any and all forms of depression. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Yeah, God come off of the woman of God a call even now demons that have been able to get through the bloodline generational curses that have even haunted and just continued to buffet you and just continue to harass I break it off of you in the name of Jesus 
I release a spirit of joy. I release a spirit of optimism. I release a spirit of expectation. And I break off of your mind all forms of depression. And I decree and declare that even now the Lord is restoring the joy of your salvation. I hear a sound, Sister Angela, that's going to come out of your mouth. It's a, it's a sound of praise that's going to sound very uniquely different. I hear God saying that what I'm doing even now in your spirit, you're going to release a sound through your praise that's literally going to cause you to even be able to recognize the shift in your spirit. Just begin to thank him right now. Thank him right now. Come on, thank him right now. In Jesus' name, we break off of you, man of God. Depression. We take authority right now over the spirit of depression, anxiety, fears. We command in Jesus' name that the spirit of joy, whew, spirit of joy, be released upon the man of God right now. We thank you, O oh God. We stir the wells of joy. We stir the wells of joy. The wells of joy. I prophesy that joy is coming to your home. And I'm not talking about just your physical home, but your spirit, your spirit, your person. Joy is coming to your heart. You found it difficult to even at times... God, what is there to be excited about? Things have looked glim. It's almost been like, God, I just don't see the end of this tunnel. I don't see that light. But I hear the Lord saying that he's getting ready to release a spirit that's going to cause you to see the end of that tunnel. Am I ever going to get through this tunnel, Father? I hear the Lord saying, not only are you getting through it, but God says, be not weary in well-doing. For due season is coming upon you, and you're about to reap, sir. I command even now that the Lord strengthen your knees, and that you will not faint, and that you will not give in, and you will not give out. Yeah, my, my soul. I even pray now that the Lord strengthen you, and that he strengthens you in the spirit, even now, with joy. Come on, somebody help them praise God. Yeah, my. That's it. Praise God. Come on, praise him. Yeah, my. Father, I pray for your daughter. I break off of her all forms of depression. I decree and declare right now that, Father God, her mind, her spirit be filled with hope, filled with joy. God, at times she has found it difficult to believe or trust you because of things that she's experienced. But today I decree and declare that you restore her joy. Give her hope once again in you, God, of you. I decree and declare right now that forms of depression that have even tried to torment your mind, times when you even thought that you were about to lose your mind, times where you threw up your hands and said, forget it, I'm just going to do life the way I choose to do it. God says, even now, I am breaking off of you that spirit of hopelessness. And I decree and declare right now that the spirit of joy be released over your mind and your spirit. I break off of you demons and spirits of depression and hopelessness in the name of Jesus. And I hear the Lord saying that there is a better day, a new day. There is a day that I have prepared for you, daughter. And God says, I'm even bringing you into that place. Sima, deka where you will no longer fear. Mm. And I'm hearing the Lord saying that the fear that has gripped you have literally gripped you and caused you to live your life in the fear of things that have happened to you, things that many people will not even believe that has happened. But God says, I'm even bringing healing. I see healing to your heart. I see where the Lord has even released an anointing to even heal the broken places where people have let you down and they have broken you. But God says, I'm going to put you back together again, daughter, and I'm going to cause you to hope. I'm going to cause you to believe. I'm going to cause you to trust. And I hear the Lord saying you have trust issues. You don't trust many people. You don't trust many people because they have broken you. They have hurt you. They have let you down. And there have been people who are really close to you that have wounded you. And God says that I'm getting ready to heal the hurt. I'm going to heal the broken. And I hear the Lord saying that I'm going to cause even those who still hold grudges against you for no reason. 
God says, I'm going to deal with their heart, and they will release, and they will apologize. Your joy is not based on them coming back to apologize, but God says, I'm dealing with folk who have dealt with you wrongly. And God says, let them go, let them go. I, even now, I pray for a spirit of forgiveness to be upon this daughter. That, Father, you will enable her to release every person that has wounded her, that has hurt her. And I thank you for a spirit of healing right now. Healing. Yeah, that's it, baby. Just release and let God heal you. In the name of Jesus, we release joy right now. God is healing you. He's healing you. He's healing you. Prophet Jacqueline, can I just get you? I'm going to get this woman of God to just touch your belly. It's just a, a place where we like to lay hands, and she's just going to lay her hands on your stomach, and we're going to release even now the spirit of healing. God is stirring up, and he's healing you right now. He's healing you. And even the enemy desire to attack your physical body, but we bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all all, rebuke all forms of sickness and disease that will even desire to attach itself to her body and I decree and declare father that you're healing her in her mind body and her soul somebody give God praise lift those hands daughter I break off of you the spirit of depression anxiety fear and I decree and declare right now that the Lord is blessing you and strengthening you that the Lord will even cause the joy of the Lord to even Feel your spirit and that you will walk in the strength of God, that you will walk in the strength of God. God is doing something in you. There's a hunger that I see on you, Sister Isha. There's a, there's a hunger that's in you. And God says, continue to hunger and thirst after me. Continue to hunger and thirst after righteousness. For God says, I am developing in you a woman of God that has yet been seen and yet to be seen. And yes, you are a woman of God, but there is a whole new creation that God is doing in you. God is developing you. God is cultivating in you a stronger faith, a stronger walk, a deeper walk. I hear the Lord saying, come deeper, daughter. Come deeper. Come deeper deeper into my word, deeper into prayer. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you now the spirit of joy. Oh God, and God says, I shall give you the desires of your heart as you delight yourself in me. The desires of your heart as you delight yourself in me, saith the Lord. Somebody ought to help her praise God. Woo. Hallelujah. Father, I break off of the man of God. The spirit of depression. I decree and declare no form of depression will be able to attach itself to your mind, your spirit. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare the spirit of joy be released now. Feel his heart with joy. Feel his heart with joy. Feel his heart with joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah, my mind. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Father, I thank you. I release joy like rivers. The well of joy even now be upon you. Fill his heart right now. In Jesus' name, begin to give him praise, Jemma. Begin to give him praise. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody praise. Praise him. Give yeah, bye-bye. Rekha, manso, glory. Father, I pray for the man of God. I decree and declare that no form and no form of depression will be upon this man of God's mind. I pray right now and release the anointing of God. I decree and declare depression to be broken off of his mind, his spirit. I release the spirit of joy even now upon him. And I decree and declare that joy shall flow like a river out of his belly. Our Father, I thank you right now that the joy and the wells of joy shall be stirred in his spirit and his belly. And I prophesy right now in Jesus' name that God, his mind, his spirit, and even his body, mm, yikai, be filled with joy. I decree and declare right now depression to be broken. And God, you're releasing now gladness of heart. You're releasing now contentment and cheerfulness over the man of God in Jesus' name. Every curse broken, every generational curse broken off of him. And the wells of joy shall flow. 
the wheels of joy shall flow. Come on, put your hands together and bless him. Right now, if you didn't come to the altar, lift your hands right now. Father, I release over this congregation the spirit of joy. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our hearts with joy. Allow our minds to take the attitude of gladness. I prophesy that even now, that rivers of joy shall flow in and through this people. Joy, 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 like rivers, joy, joy. Mother, I lay my hands upon you and I release blessings of strength. The enemy will not deplete you of your strength, but God is continuing to restore. I release over you the miracle of strength and healing right now in the name of Jesus. And God says, I'm pleased with your posture, that though you have been tried, you have not lost not only your faith, but your praise and your posture has gained heaven's attention. And I release over you the spirit of restoration, healing, and strength, strength to your body, strength to your mind. And I decree and declare that everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten, that God will cause it to be restored unto you in the name of Jesus. And that the warfare, even in your body, is even complete and over. And I prophesy a spirit of healing over you right now. That the Lord will strengthen your body, your limbs, your legs, your joints, rebasso, your mind, even now. I decree and declare that God is firing up the sinews of your brain. I pray over you and I release healing right now, Father. I release the spirit of healing and I prophesy a miracle of strength. I decree and declare it right now in Jesus' name. Come on, can I get a joyful praise in this place? Come on, lift up a praise. Come on, lift up a praise. Lift up a praise. Lift up a praise. Here it comes. My, my, so I speak to Impact Church Global. I prophesy rivers of joy. I prophesy wells of joy. I prophesy wells of joy. I prophesy wells of joy. I thank you, God, that the wells of joy are being unstopped. I decree and declare that we're digging new wells. We're digging new wells. We're digging new wells. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Glory. In the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Ah. God wants us to stay in the posture of victory, but it takes the spirit of strength. And your strength is not predicated. It's not based on your circumstance, your situation. And I know that it takes faith to look beyond all of that mess, to get beyond all of the stuff that you see and that you're dealing with. But I promise you that you have been equipped. You have been equipped. Come on, touch yourself and say, I'm equipped to walk in this joy. Ooh, I hear grandma saying, this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. And if the world didn't give it to me, the world will not take it away. Woo! 